everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today I am going to be starting on a brand new historical project that I am very excited about. I did mention this one in my like 2023 plans projects type video. So you have had a hint of this project if you watched that video, but I am going to be making an 18th century pastoral style dress. So these did exist. Like, there are fashion plates of these dresses. Like, for example, the fashion plates that I'm going to be popping up on screen right here. But also, I feel like they were highly inspired by opera ballet type costumes of the time. I think generally they call them opera costumes, but they were used by the dancers in the operas primarily, I believe. And they were a little bit fantastical. This was kind of a special type of getup. So that's what I'm going to be making today. So we're talking like slightly above ankle length skirt, you know, a little scandalous there, pastel, lovely pinks and greens and creams types, colors, floofy, floofy aprons, the whole shebang. So I'm not exactly sure how long this project is going to take. I'm hoping to get it done like while cherry blossoms maybe are still in bloom, but it is March 14th, Pi Day right now. And... I don't know how long cherry blossoms will stay in bloom, but that's kind of my goal is like finish it while there are still cherry blossoms on trees. And considering they haven't really started yet, I'm hoping I'm going to be okay. So I showed you my two main fabrics in that planning video, but this is one of them. I have had this in my stash for freaking forever. Like I think I got this from a Hancock Fabrics that was going out of business in, I want to say... 2014 so like nine years ago and it is I can't quite tell if it's a shantung or a dupioni it's one of those and then it has this lovely woven stripe in here with the pink and the green and I realized that that green is the exact same color green as another fabric I've had in my stash for forever this is a like textured silk I don't know the exact term of what it is supposed to be but I showed you guys this silk when I talked about my making of my 1840s dress video because it's actually the exact same silk just in the green colorway instead of the blue and I got this from Fabric Mart Fabrics I believe on one of their like super super sales when they used to put fabric as flash sales silk fabric as flash sales for like seven dollars a yard and I wish that that still happened because oh my god I miss those cheap prices on silk. So those are my two main fabrics, but I think I am probably going to be supplementing with some like pink as well. Now I don't really have pink silk. I do have a tiny bit left of, this is actually double sided. So I know it's looking very brown right now, but the other side is this kind of mauvey pink. There's not a lot left on here. This is left over from another project, but it does actually coordinate pretty well with the pink on the stripes. So I may be supplementing with a little bit of this just kind of as like a more of a trim embellishment type color. So yeah, that is something that I'm probably going to add in there. And the cool thing about this is that the shapes of these bodices, so I'm going for like a, a lace up front. Generally, it seems like there were two types of these bodices. You see the lace up front really, really frequently, and that tends to be a little bit more of like how they would style it in the fashion plates, whereas the opera costumes had a fully closed front, and I don't know if they laced up the back or they just like covered it or it was an artistic interpretation and the artist just did not draw in where a closure would be since normal 18th century closures were in the front. But yeah, I'm doing like that really decorative pastoral shepherdess type look of lacing up the front. And this is just going to be covered in like bows and all sorts of stuff. I don't actually have like, this is my design yet. So I am going to start by playing with the fabrics on the dress form and just kind of looking at what I like together where. But I think I started to say I should actually be able to use my Felicity bodice pattern for this because Felicity has a stomacher front and this whole lace up front thing is a stomacher front. And the back I think is also going to wind up being very similar. That said, sleeves are going to be different. I want the big puffy sleeve look, kind of like this painting right here. I love this look. I wish that it showed the full dress because I just love the lace up front with the puffy sleeves. 
it just looks so like airy and beautiful and I kind of wish that I had the pink solid to be able to make this out of but I'm determined to use these fabrics that have been in my stash forever so I'm gonna go ahead and get started and play with some fabrics on the dress form and show you kind of the idea that I come up with and then we're going to start cutting into patterns I'm hoping I think that I won't have to make a mock-up because I just did Felicity so as long as I double check that those are like I took the patterns off of the final then I don't think I'm gonna need a mock-up so fingers crossed for me please but while I go ahead and do all that, I also want to take a quick minute to talk to you about today's sponsor, Brooklinen. Probably a lot of you have already heard of Brooklinen and their amazing linen sheets and bedding. I have been using Brooklinen's linen bedding now for months and I absolutely love how cozy and comfortable their linen sheets feel. So when I found out that they also have towels, I was super excited to try them. And seriously, these towels are the most plush, soft, and thick towels that I have ever experienced. They're made from 100% Turkish cotton and they just feel absolutely luxurious. I got mine in ocean blue, but they're available in 11 different colors and patterns. And if you wanted to refresh your whole bathroom and save 15% while doing so, you can get the super plush towel move-in bundle, which comes with four bath towels, four washcloths, four hand towels, and a bath mat. And you can mix and match the different colors and patterns within your bundle, though I opted for all blue. My favorites though are the super plush bath sheets, which are huge and wonderful, and I definitely recommend them. And right now you can click the link down in the description below and use my code LADYREBECCA for $20 off your order of $100 or more. As you can see, Lion and Dora are absolutely in love with these towels as well. Dora thinks they're just the softest thing and it's hard to keep her off of them. And they also absolutely love the sheets. So I definitely recommend Brooklinen for all your bedding and bath needs. I have a design. Yeah, it's not this. I started by trying to drape things on the form and then realized that was really just not going to work. So let me show you what I did do. What I did instead, I mean, I did take the fact that I wanted the green for the bodice and the stripey for the skirt, but basically I drew this out both front and back. I know I'm not a very good artist, but this is what I had. I drew this out and darkened in my lines and then copied it. So I made a few of these copies. Actually, you can see one of the other copies right here. And that way I could color it in in different ways because I don't know how to do this sort of thing on the computer. So I just use colored pencils and I colored this colorway in first with the intention of also then doing another one with like stripes as the bodice or with maybe pink as like the insert in the stomacher and just trying different combinations. But I actually really like this combination. So I'm going with the green for the bodice and the overskirt and then the stripey is for the underskirt and then I'm going to have like a big floofy apron and this is going to be a big floofy ruffle. I don't know yet how deep this one's going to be. Traditionally speaking, when you look at these fashion plates, they're really, really deep, but I don't want it to come all the way up to the apron. So I'm going to have to play with that. And then the floofy will also be the sleeves, except honestly, I'm probably going to do both of these out of like poly voile from Joann's just because it's the right floof that I want. And I know it's easily accessible, but I don't want poly on my sleeves. So that is probably going to be cotton. I'm not yet positive what the color is that's going to be behind for the stomacher. It is either going to be the green of the bodice or I may do a white back there, but I'm using pink scraps of silk that I have left over for this Dora. Excuse me, I'm talking here. I'm trying to show them this drawing and your paws are in the way. Your face is in the way. May I? So I am going to use pink either ribbon trim, oh my gosh, cat, or something from my stash so that I can get that pink contrast here and then the lacing and then a little pink right here. Likewise, I have it for the bows back here for the pickups of the skirt. So I think that that just kind of picks everything up and brings everything together really nicely. And that is my design plan. 
Now I was hoping that I could just go right in with the Felicity patterns, cut it right out, not have to do a mock-up, etc. But the one thing here is that you can see that this comes together all the way. And this was how these were like always done with this sort of pastoral look. They would come together at the bottom. Felicity doesn't because it's more like a traditional, almost like a robe a la Francaise. It has quite a bit of separation there. There's about 3.2 five inches or so separation cat and so I need to re-mock up the bodice fronts and the stomacher to be able to a get no separation there at the point but also to elongate this point because Felicity's is actually pretty darn short so I want this to be quite a bit longer the back however will work perfectly as is so I've been cutting out the pieces for a few hours now and so far I have cut out three of the stripey skirt panel pieces. Those actually did have to be cut. Normally I would just rip 18th century panels like on the grain, but because they have a woven stripe that is a different weave than the rest of the fabric, you do unfortunately have to cut it. And that fabric doesn't really seem to be woven very well on the grain. I've come across various other fabrics like this in the past as well, but yeah, it is very uneven, like the horizontal does not seem to be perpendicular to the vertical stripes. The horizontal weave does not seem to be perpendicular to the vertical stripes, so um, that might be interesting when I go to sew it together. But I did cut three panels on that. Honestly, I think three might be a little bit full, but two is way not full enough. So we'll see. I might like squidge things around. I might only use half of one of those panels. I'm not really positive. And then I did do two of the overskirt panels. So that's the green ones that you see back there. I made them the same length as the other ones. I wasn't really positive what length I would need, but I figured we'll do the same length and we'll see. I've got a ton of this green fabric, which leads me to the next thing that I did that is probably unwise, but I did it anyway because I have so much of the green fabric. I decided to not do a mock-up of the bodice fronts. So I have cut the bodice fronts. Basically down here at the corner, I widened it out by 1.75 inches and then I just kind of continued the curve down until it would meet there. So I think it's honestly about 1.75 inches farther out and farther down at the corner here. And then I just took from kind of where like the bust point ish is like about where the stomacher started and widened from there. So we'll see when I go to put it on what it looks like, but I don't really feel like putting on stays today probably at all, which means it's not going to happen until Sunday. Today's Friday. And yeah, I wanted to kind of put stuff together first and then see how it goes. So I have all of my pieces now ready to be flatlined or rather like the flat lining is pinned in and the backs as well are sitting over there. I don't have my baby lock surgery yet so I'm going to be surging this with Barbie colored thread on it because my brother's surgery is a pain to rethread, and I don't feel like trying to figure out what color thread to use. I also don't have green serger thread. I don't think that matches this exactly so it's going to be surged with like pink and coral and that's just what's going to happen. But you know what? Oh, well. So that's my next step is to actually surge all of the flat lining. Like that's how I flat line is it's with the serger. So I'm going to do all of that and then assemble the bodice pieces and then probably assemble the petticoat pieces and probably the two overskirt pieces. And at that point, I might be ready for trying things on. So this is where I am stopping now for the day. I know it looks like I have a lot done, but this skirt is not actually pleated. It is just pinned to the waist of the dress form right now because I realized I don't have the bias tape that I need to make the petticoat ties. So the petticoat panels are together and maybe tomorrow or Sunday I can get some bias tape pleat that all up. Likewise, this is also just pinned there. That's going to be a while because this is going to be connected directly to the bodice. The bodice itself, though, is made up. You can see like all of the back pieces. Sorry, I know it's super dark back there, but that is made up. So that has to be tried on, but it is at least together. So hopefully I'll get some more work done on that on Sunday, but I think that's pretty good for one day's work so far. So I feel like I'm slightly putting the cart before the horse just because I don't have the petticoat on. So my like waist and hip area is not precisely 
what it's going to be like you know size wise because with every petticoat you add more size like at first I had put this bodice on without putting on my bum roll here and my petticoat my quilted petticoat and this just like completely overlapped it was like this sort of thing like it looked ridiculous then I put those undergarments on and it is much better however it is still coming to a close like maybe a couple of inches above the very point and I kind of want it to wait until like the point so I'm a little bit torn on whether I have it right or not because obviously I don't have the petticoat on. I'm tempted, I have not put Felicity away yet, so I'm actually tempted to put on Felicity's petticoat just so I have something that's gonna be really similar and see what it closes with that on. In fact, yeah, I think I'm gonna go do that. So I'm gonna grab Felicity's petticoat, put it on, and just see what this looks like with another petticoat. Speaking of petticoats though, I, don't know that I'm going to be able to wear this quilted petticoat for two reasons. One, this is a spring dress. I don't know what the weather is quite going to be like by the time I wear it. It may be too warm for a quilted petticoat. However, I really, really like the shape that it gives. The other issue with this quilted petticoat is that it is currently too long for what I'm going for with like the ankle length. So part of me is just like, okay, let me just put in a temporary hem. I'll hem it up shorter and I could always just let that down for other outfits. And honestly, I think that's what I'm gonna do just because of like easiness. But part of me is like, oh, I should make an ugly puffer, which is what American Duchess used to call them, which were like short little puffy quilted petticoats that you'd wear under a regular petticoat. But I also don't have an ankle length regular petticoat. So there's that. So I think I'm probably just gonna hem this one shorter and still use it and just hope that it doesn't get too warm when I wear this outfit. So let me grab that petticoat and we'll see what this looks like. So kind of as I expected, I am now in a good place with where this connects down at the bottom here. I did fold in the edges, by the way, just enough so that like how it's going to be folded in here, how it's going to be bound here. The other thing that I have been thinking about is I think I originally told you that my plan was to do an actual lace up front stomacher where you know there's eyelets or lacing rings and I physically lace myself into it every time. But looking closer at this portrait here which is definitely my favorite inspiration for this outfit I can tell that hers is fake because she's got like little jewels and stuff all in her lacing and you can't do that if it's functional lacing and there's all like the trim along the side. So I'm pretty sure what is going on here in her outfit is that we have actually a stomacher with the lacing built into the stomacher and it's got kind of a like a faux ruched shirt chemise type look underneath with the lacing over that and then the jewels and the trim and stuff stuck on and it is closing via pins etc underneath the trimming. Now as you might have heard in my Felicity videos I do not like closing with pins so this one because I only have to make one stomacher instead of two I can sew one side on and the other side I can do the hooks and bars like I did on Felicity and that way I can get that really really pretty look of her stomacher but have it be like faux and have it be more functional for me because I don't plan on trading this out with any other stomachers so that's my plan with that. I'm going to go ahead and take the measurements right now for what I need for the stomacher since this is a very different shape from Felicity and that way I can get that base cut out and then I'll figure out how to do the shirring. I'm running to Joanne's this afternoon to get the other fabrics that I need like the white voile, like the bias so that I can finish this off and in the meantime I'm also going to start pleating up the skirts for the bodice, the skirts that are connected to the gown. So that is my plan. I will check in with you later. So I actually have been doing a lot more tweaks to this. For one thing, I really changed the shape of the tail back here because it was just totally wrong. So I cut this up way higher and made this way pointier. But also you can see like on this side, it's kind of doing this weird heart thing and I don't like that. So I have folded it in on this side to be much more straight and that's helping. And really it did wind up crossing over down here too. So I've tucked more of that out of the way, which winds up making it a little bit shorter, but it means that it's gonna come to just the exact point there. So I have to change the fold here to match this one, but I think this side is now correct. And now once I fix this one, I can move on to adding the skirts. 
So I have created a base shape for the stomacher here. And just so you can see how different it is from like Felicity, for example, that is with the tops aligned and you can see like the curve is different here. The point is different. And so basically I had pinned this one in to see what changes I need to, to make. But from this, I am going to apply cotton voile, which I did buy a, it's a cotton poly voile actually that I bought at Joann's. So I'm going to apply that like kind of ruched up and just kind of sew that along the edges here. And then I will wind up doing the ribbon. That said, I could not find a ribbon that matched this pink, which is really what I wanted at Joann's. So I did get a lighter color ribbon. It looks like this, but I'm not super happy with it. It on the screen, I feel like it looks a lot closer than it is it's really not that close yeah you can kind of see the difference there it'll work but that'll mean that I'm not sure that I'd be able to use this in all of the places that I want to use this I also couldn't find a trim to go along the edges of the bodice I wanted some sort of like kind of Passementier, I don't know how to say that, but you know, the 18th century trim look kind of like in the portrait and I couldn't find anything there. So I'm kind of looking online at Amazon now to see if I can find like maybe some pre-made ribbon rosette trim that I could apply to there but we'll see. So that's not going to happen this week, obviously. But the next thing I'm doing here is I am going to stitch down all of my binding that I sewed on the machine on this side. I'm going to stitch it down by hand on that side, and that will finish off the whole opening of the bodice. And by then my voile should come out of the laundry, and then I can hopefully put the voile on the stomacher and maybe even do sleeves. We'll see. So this is what I've got here with the stomacher so far. Unfortunately, I didn't realize just how uneven this bottom section is. Like from when I started with it, it wasn't a complete square rectangle or whatever. And so like this area was long enough to get to the point. But by the time we got to the middle, it's not actually long enough to get to the point. So I'm really hoping that this bit is going to be covered by the bodice, which I think it is because the bodice should overlap this by like... A little bit honestly I'm almost worried that it's too long and I probably should have checked to make sure that it's not too long but I ran a couple of extra basting stitches and then ran the gathering basting stitches up at the top as well these ones will come out these two right here and I will be stitching the ribbon to kind of hold these in place but since I'm not entirely happy with the ribbon I don't know that I should really go much further with this right now. Just checked and we'll be totally fine with this area down here. Once the other side is in, that is gonna cover that gap sort of thing down there. So unfortunately, as seems to be so often the case, I did not get nearly as much done on this project as I really wanted to. So the stomacher is partially done. It's going to need like all the ribbons and trim and stuff added onto it. I also think I want to do a lace trim up here at the top to kind of hide that raw edge up there, but it's sewn on on the sides. And so at least for now, the ruching is kind of stitched into place. Again, I am going to like stitch the intersections of the ribbons and stuff, maybe add a little sparkle bit like on my inspiration portrait. We shall see. And then I got part of the binding stitched down by hand, didn't quite finish that, and the skirt is not yet attached. So that's where I will be starting next week is attaching the skirts to this and doing the petticoat pleating to that bias waistband and also adding the sleeves. Those will be kind of all the first things that will be happening next week. I also did buy a couple of different trim options off of Amazon. So those will wind up coming during next week's video and we'll see how that looks as far as like the trim on the edges of the bodice there. So a couple of different like embroidered versus ribbon rosette type trims that I'm looking forward to seeing how they look because I think that'll be really pretty. So that is going to be it for me for today for this project. Hopefully you've liked this video so far. If you did, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays. But I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashion. 
donations. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, where you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon, Mirage, Laura, and Jean, and a humongous thank you to Brooklinen for sponsoring this week's video. Again, if you are interested in getting your own awesome super plush towels or their linen sheets, do click the link down in the description below and use my code LADYREBECCA for $20 off your purchase of $100 or more. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope y'all have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing! Are we having a towel party? Are we having a towel party? We are! You want a towel? Everyone gets a towel and a sheet? Oh, it's so comfy here. It's so comfy.